I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to studying for standardized exams. I just think there's something so fun about taking a bunch of content and getting very analytical about your process and just like planning it out and executing the plan. Anyway, I know I'm a nerd, but I got a 516 on the MCAT and I just want to go through kind of a rapid fire 13 mistakes to avoid when studying for the MCAT so you can crush your MCAT too, even if you're not like a nerd like me and you get someone excited about it and get your goal score. If you're new here, my name is Maggie. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Colorado. The uh, second time I applied, I earned 10 acceptances just by a 3.3 GPA. So it's life by Maggie. This YouTube, everything is really just all about me sharing all the things I learned the hard way so you don't have to. So for this one, it's gonna be all about the MCAT. I made a post, this exact post on Instagram and the caption is way too short to like kind of further explain each point. So I'll make this quick, but way more than I can put in an Instagram caption at the same time. Number one is not giving yourself enough months to study or trying to juggle too much on top of MCAT study. If you don't give yourself enough time, then you probably aren't even scoring at the practice exams you like want to score. You probably didn't even have time to take a bunch of practice exams. You just need enough time to make a realistic study plan. Don't rush this. When I first applied, I thought, taking an extra year to get all my ducks properly in a row was the end of the world. And I'm just here to tell you it's not. Please give yourself enough time. So for me, the first time I took it, that meant three months because I had zero commitments. I got to go to the library Monday through Saturday, eight hours a day, religiously. So all I needed was three months. And then sadly, before I applied the second time, cause I didn't get in the first time, my score had expired. So I was super happy of how I did the first time. I got a 509 and I was so proud of that. Then it expired. I did a lot of soul searching, how to take it again, start from scratch. And so the second time I got a 516, obviously it worked in my favor, but at that time I was juggling working full time as an EMT. I did though have a very flexible schedule. And I think it's, it was a lot more helpful that I had 12 hour shifts only three to four times a week versus an eight to five Monday through Friday. I think I would have needed more time if it were the last but with those 12 hour flexible shifts, I only needed five months and my test day got pushed back due to COVID. So like five months, I was like dying to take the thing at that time or at that point. Five months was perfect for me the second time with medium to high commitments, low high medium, I don't know, whatever. There's some examples. Number two is skipping content review. I know that it is so painful to go back and read every single chapter or watch a video that correlates to every single chapter, whatever works best for you. But this is laying down your foundation and it can be super slow if you're trying to take pages and pages and pages of notes every chapter you go through. Like, of course you're gonna get through one chapter a day doing it that way, but try to actively read or watch the content, get through every single chapter Spend less time on the one that you recently had a class on and more times on the one that maybe you've never had a class with that content and just get through it. Like with stuff like that, I always go in my head, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. It's like kind of like that, like just, you just gotta get it done. Not too many notes. The only practice questions I did were the questions at the end of each chapter. So not a ton of passive practice yet. Really just laying down that foundation and keeping a teeny minimal, like be very super intentional about the amount of flashcards you make only on super, super important stuff. Be super picky. Number three is taking full length exams untimed slash not simulating test day. Just take your full length exams timed because then if you take a total of eight, that is eight full days of practicing that exact time you're gonna have come test day and you will just be more prepared. So there's an option to take practice exams untimed, but I do not recommend doing that, especially if you're a slow test taker like me. I had to start real early practicing the timing. The first few tests I took, I definitely did not finish the sections. So like in between practice tests, I knew I had to keep working on my timing. And then I personally like to simulate test day for, so what that meant for me was starting my exam, practice exam at 8 a.m. because that's when my real one was, except not because of COVID, but for you, I'm sure it will be. And taking the exact same breaks. The last few leading up to actual test day, I ate the exact same thing. I went to bed, you know, just the exact same routine on test day. I practiced that thing like five times before actual test day. I think that helps so much when it comes to execution. Again, like I get real analytical about this, okay? I highly recommend. Um, number four is making more flashcards than you can get through in a day. I probably made this mistake most with like step one. So honestly, all standardized exams I've taken, I kind of have the same ex process. It's just a different standardized exam with MCAT, I like did everything right. <laughs> 
With step one, I did a lot wrong. And I would say one of them was probably just like, I wasn't able to keep up with the flashcards all that well. And then so like, then I wouldn't do them. And then I would like try to do them. And anyway, I think if you find yourself not getting through them, give yourself a daily limit of how many new ones you can make or make zero new ones until you've like had three to five passes of your current ones. Then once you start making new flashcards, give yourself a daily limit of like 25 new ones or something or 10 or whatever you need to get yourself back on track with the current cards you've made. And then make sure you don't fall into that same trap of making too many. This is way easier to do when you're using Anki. For the MCAT, I used handmade flashcards. So it's almost like a built-in hard stop of like, you can only write so many flashcards if you do handmade ones. But if you're using Anki, you just have to be more intentional and not let yourself do too many. Number five is not getting a QBank like UWorld or the AAMC bundle to save money. These are absolutely essential especially the AAMC bundle. But before you use the AAMC content, I highly recommend a third-party QBank. My top recommendation is just UWorld if you wanna use Kaplan or something else out there. Blueprint has one, like those are great companies too. But if your reason for not getting it is scrapping and saving money, the cost of the MCAT itself is $345 at the time of me recording this. So if you can find $345 to take it, you've got to scrounge up all the pennies and extra money you can ask for Christmas and birthday money, all the things. So you can get the proper resources you can to give yourself a chance of success. This is the, one of the big factors that helps you get into medical school. So don't be short-sighted and be like, oh, I'm gonna save $300. Cause I don't wanna get this. No, <laughs> like save in other areas, not the MCAT like Starbucks, I don't know, whatever else you spend money on. Okay, number six is not taking enough practice exams. The first time that I took the MCAT, I was really happy with my score, but I probably only took maybe three or four. And I just remembered when I did have to start from scratch and do it again, I remembered that I just didn't have a lot of practice exams. I didn't do a lot of practice questions. I didn't have a lot of that like practice. <laughs> passage-based practice, whether in the form of just the passages or the full-length exam. So the second time around, I took 13 and it was perfect for the five months. I took three during content review, so beginning, middle, end, and then I took like a half length and then four more during like that phase two studying. And then I took five more from the AAMC bundle and it was perfect. It gave me enough time in between practice exams, about 10 days once I was like really in the thick of it, to actually make strong improvements in my weaknesses in between exams. But also it was enough to where I was like, I was like doing really well. Like I got a 519 on my last practice exam. So why I got a 516 on the real thing? I don't know, but I felt very comfortable taking practice exams and that's how you want to feel, but not burn out. We'll get to that. Seven is not having a routine and study schedule planned in advance. So I think one of the top success factors for me was that every morning I woke up, I started promptly at 8 a.m. I opened my planner and I knew already in my planner was what questions I was doing and what topics I was doing them in and when my lunch break was every single day so that you're not walking into your office at 8 a.m. or your study space and then you spend the next hour and a half being like, oh, what should I study today? Uh, maybe ugh, like Ochem was really hard on that last exam. Like maybe I should work on Ochem, but oh, also like that, those physics concepts, like they could, uh, maybe I should do this. And it's like a hour and a half later and then you're hungry and then you have to take a snack. No, you need to eliminate all that and make sure you're planning everything in advance. Number eight is taking practice exams back to back without working on your weaknesses in between. So this is what I kind of mentioned I was gonna talk about more, but I did this, I made this mistake big time for step one. If, and I know the feeling when you're in that trap, the feeling is like, oh my gosh, I'm not scoring where I want to. I just need to take more practice, more practice. I can't rest. I can't take any days off. I can't possibly make my days shorter. I need to study more. I need to do more practice tests because that's the only way. Volume is what I need to increase, but that is wrong thinking. <laughs> I've done it and I think I passed step one with the hair of my chinny chin, whatever that is. Um, if I had just taken a chill pill, studied less and had higher quality of studying and also done less practice exams, I would have done better. And I think I would have had higher practice exams by the end and not felt so like barely above passing. I was juggling like a billion things. So obviously it's easier to fall into that trap if that's you too, because I was in third year advanced science courses. So I was like full-time courses. I was going to clinic. I only had like two hours from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. to study for step one for like three months straight, juggling all the other things, also exams for ASCs and then that. So if you're really busy, just know you're more likely to fall into that trap, but please still study less when you feel 
like you're going into that trap, if that makes sense. Number nine, nine is not reviewing every single question and understanding why you're getting questions wrong. Again, I definitely fell into this trap for step one, but for the MCAT, you better believe every single question I reviewed, even if I got it right, because if you got it right, maybe you guessed, maybe you don't actually know that content. Analyzing and having a table of different categories of why you got it wrong is how you know what to do between now and the next practice exam to do better on the next practice exam. So you need time in between exams and you need to know what to focus on or you're not gonna improve your strengths. Again, if you get like super analytical and like take emotions out of it and just find the data and then just see what your weakness is and hyper focus on that and then that's like the key to improving in between, I think. And my practice exams always very steadily increased and I think this was a big key. So review every single question. The very first full length exam that I reviewed, like day one of content review, the day before that when I took a practice exam, I swear it took over three days to get through every question. It took me forever. I thought I would never get through it, but I was determined. I knew it would help me. And so I did it. And the second one took forever and the third one probably took forever, but somewhere halfway in there, they started taking less and less. And by the A and C ones for that phase three, I could get through it in a day because one, I wasn't missing that many questions. I was getting like 93% of them right. I had just built up, like I'd worked on so many of my weaknesses, there were just less weaknesses. So it compounds. If you make yourself do this in the beginning, and I felt this was step two, because step two, I kind of like went back to all the good habits. Like if you take the time to review all that stuff you don't know in the beginning, it compounds. And then when you're pra doing practice questions, you're like, hey, I took the time to review that and like learn it when I was reviewing that exam. So I know this one this time. And then it's just cool feeling, I promise. <laughs> Number 10 is not timing yourself during practice questions. I guess it's kind of repetitive, but also obviously when you're taking a full length practice exam, you need to do time mode. And then probably at least halfway into phase two studying, when you're using like a year old question bank, you should be doing timed mode. I think it's totally okay not to in the beginning when you're just switching from content review to phase two, but at some point you gotta make the switch to always doing time mode before you get to that AMC material. Number 11 is not making adjustments if your practice scores aren't where you want them to be. If you, okay, so I, during my phase one studying, I got like a 498 on my diagnostic. Halfway through, I got a 502. I was like, oh, cool, happy with that broke 500. Then on the third exam, at the end of content review, I got a 502 again, and I'm like, whoa, I didn't improve at all, even though I just did 50% of content review. So I went back to the drawing board and completely changed my plan, pushed back my test date, and then I inputted phase two, basically. I was planning to go from content view review to AMC material. I guess I didn't know phase two the whole phase three thing existed, but somehow I figured out that uh, maybe I should get the UWorld Q Bank. I bought four more blueprint practice exams and I inputted that phase two. So I like, did a big 180 change when I was like, hey, I'm not progressing like I want to. So don't be afraid to do that. 12 is not enough passage-based practice. So like I said, the first time I took it, like I didn't really have a phase two. I think I did some content review and some like practice questions and then I did the AMC stuff, but I probably, obviously it was a long time ago, so who knows, but I would be very confident in saying I probably got through well over 90% of the year old Q bank. And then again, like I'm sure I did like 95 plus percent of all the practice questions, in the AMC bundle. So I probably doubled or tripled the amount of passage-based practice I did the second time around. And lastly, number 13 is stressing over your diagnostics score. I probably should have put this first because that's the first thing you do when you study for the MCAT, but truly it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're like, oh, Maggie said she got a 498 and I got a 477. It doesn't matter you again it's numbers take the emotion out of it write down that number so you have something to track and then you can just compare it to the next number it will improve you are smart so don't stress it does not matter how low it is because it's gonna go up it's just a starting point point. and with that that is all i have for you my one ask to you is let me know in the comments which one of these you want me to expand on and just like deep dive into that topic i feel like i have a lot of in-cap videos but if there's anything else you want me to just zone in and talk more about that show you how i did it anything let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for sticking around for this kind of chaotic, supposed to be like little like chatty kind of video. I hope you learned a ton and you're gonna crush your MCAT now.